This video will demonstrate the performance of an intra-class correlation coefficient. Typically this analysis is done in which we're trying to establish the reliability or consistency of repeated measures or of a measure. And we think of this typically in the test-retest format where we might have uh, two individual testers measuring the same uh, characteristic or same measure in subjects and we want to determine how consistent these measures are either between typically between two individuals. So what we have here is data uh, in which we're measuring body fat percentage so we've got rater number one measured body fat percentage and then rater number two measured the same people um, using the same measure and so we want to determine if these two raters are consistent or are agreeing in their uh, measurements. And so this is again typically done when we've got some kind of quantitative measure. We want to make sure that the measurement technique or the people using the measurement measurement technique are using it correctly and or consistently. So how we determine this analysis is we go to the analyze menu, we go to scale and reliability analysis, we want to make sure our two variables are moved over into the items box. And then we click the statistics button. We want to make sure we've got intra-class correlation coefficient checked because that's the actual analysis that we want to do. The next thing we need to do is determine what model we want to use and we have three choices here. And what this model does is try and account for where we think uh, any error or random effects might be coming from. So when we've got one-way random, we're assuming that the only random effects could be coming from either the rater or the subjects. Not both, but either or. And so if, if we're randomly choosing our subjects, um, but it's going to be very difficult to, to distinguish between the subjects because of the randomization process, we would use one-way random, and that's going to be pretty rare. In most cases, we're going to use either two-way mixed or two-way random. So when we think about two-way uh, random, what we're thinking about is that the subjects are being chosen randomly as well as the rater is being chosen randomly. So random or error effects could be coming from either of two sources. When we've got two-way mixed, our raters are fixed. In other words, the error coming from the raters is predictable or fixed. And then the subjects may be random. And so in, in this case, we're going to use the two-way mixed model because we've chosen our raters, they're fixed, and our subjects have been chosen randomly. And so this is just a way that the interclass correlation coefficient tries to account for possible error variance. Now the next thing we need to do is decide on the type of analysis we want to do. And we have two choices here. We can choose the consistency type. And this is basically trying to establish a correlation between these two values very similar to the Pearson correlation. And so this will tell us if these two variables are linear in their relationship to one another, but it won't tell us how consistent they are relative to one another as far as agreement in the measurement. So for example, we might have the data set up that in a situation where these two measures are linearly related, but we might see a consistent difference in the actual measurement from person to person. So if person number one gets an average of 13 and person number two gets an average of 17, they're linearly related but they're not agreeing, they're not consistent in their measure. They're, they're off by about four percentage points consistently. And so for many types of measures that's just not acceptable. So what we're typically interested in when we're doing this is the absolute agreement type. And in this case, that's what exactly what we'd be interested in. We want to make sure these two raters are agreeing absolutely on the measurement that they're getting. We don't want rater 2 to be off by 3 degrees consistently, or 3% or consistently. We want rater 2 to agree every single time with rater number 1. That way we know we're getting consistent results. Okay, so once we've made that, that decision as far as the model and the type, we can go ahead and click Continue. And then we click OK. And so the data output we're going to get, we're interested in, in the bottom uh, chart here. So the actual intra-class cor correlation coefficient value, um, we actually get two presented to us. We get a value for a single measure. So this would take a single measure 
and compare it to another single measure, what's the, what's the consistency or relationship between those two? But when we've got a test-retest situation, like in our example here, we're more interested in the average measures. So how consistent are the two raters relative to each other on average from person to person to person? Now, typically, we like this number to be above 0.7. Optimally, it would be greater than 0.8. Uh, excellent inter class correlation coefficient would be anything above 0.9. So in this case we're interested in the average measures and we've got an interclass correlation coefficient of 0.944 which indicates excellent um, agreement between our two raters. It's not perfect but it's it's very very high so there's not a lot of variability between our two raters so they seem to be very consistent to one another, relative to one another. <clears throat> we can also look at the confidence intervals the 95% confidence intervals for this coefficient and we can see again that 95% of all samples will have a ICC or interclass correlation coefficient somewhere between 0.84 and 0.98 so that again is very acceptable um, very good reliability so to summarize we use the interclass correlation coefficient typically to look for, look at inter-rater reliability how consistent our two raters relative to one another as, as they measure a quantitative outcome. Uh, we have several different ways we can choose the possible error that's coming into the relationship as well as choosing the type of interclass correlation coefficient we can gather. Then we will look at the actual value, the correlation coefficient value, and then determine if we have reliable or not so reliable data. We can also use the 95% confidence interval to get an idea of the range of possible interclass correlation coefficients we might see with samples other than the one that we are actually working with.